Okay, the next A to Z rework is Galio. Okay, now, Galio the Colossus. He was just kind of recently reworked um, within like, uh, I don't know how many months. It's been a reasonable amount of months, though. I don't think it's been a full year. I'm pretty sure it's close to a full year, but it's not one yet. I think in like a three more or four more months, it'll be a full year. I think. I'm not 100% sure about that one. But, yeah, Galio the Colossus. I do still have a reasonable amount of say things to say to him. I probably would have honestly said less in his old form. But no, they, they just had to break him. Just don't understand their rework department anymore. Just doesn't seem to make sense. How How is he 100% abilities when one of his... It literally needs an auto attack. What? Okay. Damage is magic. Style is apparently 100% ability. Now, it should be only a little bit over here, but it should be enough where you actually see something. Like, it, it shouldn't be 100% ability. Difficulties is two. I can understand that. Um, damage is two. That's stupid. This is stupid. When he has toughness, crowd control, and mobility... He shouldn't have this much in so many different categories. This is so stupid. They should either take away his damage or take away some of his toughness. Or his crowd control. Better yet, take away one of each of these and just give him one damage. That's what they should be doing. But no, they just decided let's just give him everything. Okay. Outside the gleaming city of Demacia, the Stone of Colossus Galio keeps vigil, uh, vigilant watch. Built as a bulwark against enemy mages he often stands um, motionless for decades until the presence of powerful magic stirs him up to life sorry i had to like something got caught in my throat there once activated galio makes the most of his time sa uh, savoring the thrill of a fight and the rare honor of defending his uh, countrymen but his tri triumphs and always are always bittersweet, for the magic he destroys is also his source of reanimation, and each victory leaves him dormant once again. Okay. Okay. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, it doesn't even have it every few seconds. Why is there no video of it? What? <laughs> okay, sure, whatever. Okay. Colossal Smash. Every few seconds, Scalia's next basic attack deals bonus magic damage is in an area. Colossal Smash cooldown is reduced when Galio hits champions with his spells. So basically, every couple of seconds, his next auto attack becomes AoE, and it builds off of ability power. But it's not an ability. It's, it's his auto attack. <laughs> Um, winds of war. Galio fires two wind blasts that converge into a large tornado. Yes, this ability does too much damage. <laughs> Shield of Durand. Galio charges a defensive stance, moving slowly upon releasing the charge. Galio will taunt and damage nearby enemies. That damages? That damages? Ah, that's ridiculous. Justice Punch. Yeah, that's a name. Oh, you even saw it right there at the very end of his, at the very end of this ability. And Smash. That's his passive. Justice Punch. Galio will briefly step back and charge, knocking up the first enemy champion he encounters. Hero's Entrance. Galio grants damage reduction to an ally after a delay. Galio smashes down on the ally's original location, knocking up nearby enemies. Okay. Okay. Galio has too much. He has too much. His passive isn't really all that good. It's more of something that just kind of happens. And when it does happen, it's nice that you can strategize it when it comes to farming. When you're actually in lane, it becomes something kind of useful. Because you'll smash down on like a large group of minions and possibly kill all of them. Um, and then when it happens in battles, like, sometimes there'll be two, uh, like, enemies near each other because you have so much CC, and because of that you'll hit multiple, but it really won't do anything insane, but it is, like, it's just something that happens that, like, when it happens, you see the effect of it, and you realize that this did actually help you if, uh, like, better than it didn't happen. Better than if it didn't happen.
and it's like it's actually a reasonable ability that is pretty pretty exactly that reasonably good his Q his Q is stupid stupid now don't look stupid honestly like just watching it it's pretty meh but you get hit by just you know one of these little parts one of these little parts can damage you okay being hit by the big tornado at all does so much damage and if he has um electrocute on it's an instant proc of electrocute it activates so quick that as long as you get hit by one or two of the little balls, because you can get hit by both of them, and then like one or two of the procs of the tornado, which they are in rapid succession, you will have electrocute proc on you like instantly. It is one of the easiest electrocute procs in the game, rivaling Azir and Lee Sin. <laughs> and it, it it's just a bit a bit stupid, honestly. Um and, like, the ability itself just does so much damage, and it's, like, percent max HP damage. And it it's really confuses me why they would, one, give that to a tank. I understand he's a bruiser, he's not really a, a full-on tank, but yet his toughness is 3, and his crowd control is 3, and yet the thing that makes him a bruiser, which you know would be his damage, is 2. And, like... I, it seems like his damage is honestly, like, if they made it any higher, then it would become three. Because there's been so many times when Galio will literally just build, like, a Leandri's Torment and a Roa, which are two healthy AP items, and he can one-shot people with it. And it's just baffling, uh, like, how much damage he is just capable of getting off in such rapid succession. And I would definitely lower the damage his Q does. I wouldn't make it percent max HP damage. I would just make it a you know a set amount. Um, it's just it's just too much damage. And I'd maybe actually make it last longer and make the ticks a bit more spread out. That way you don't are just getting chunked from standing in it. And like if you actually do stand in it, that's the problem. Maybe increase the AOE of it. That way, like, this, the little ticks may not hurt as much, and they may come a lot less frequently, but it's just a giant hazard that they're going to want to avoid. Something like that. Okay, second off, his W. I have mixed feelings about this ability. So, his W, in its sense, isn't really that insane. It is just a ability that taunts nearby al uh, allies, no, enemies, that cause them to auto-attack him but not use any abilities. It's basically a stun that still allows you to auto-attack and nothing else. And you, well, you can't really control yourself, but that's why I said it's a stun. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is, one... Why does it do damage? I didn't even realize that it does damage before. Like, I, I, I guess I just kind of assumed that it was him punching me that did the damage or his, like, Q hitting me. But it, it's just really, really annoying. The range on this thing is actually somewhat stupid. Um, like, you'll think you're outside of the range from him hitting his W and nope. From, like, he'll hold it in for, like, one more second or not even a full second and you'll somehow get snagged in it. Or even if you are outside the range, he can just, like, gap close super easily with other... It's it's kind of... it. I don't... I think it's a little bit annoying. But then the other thing that I really dislike that it doesn't even mention is that it gives him damage reduction. And I disagree with having a crowd control effect, even though it is a taunt giving him damage reduction. Like, I understand that, yes, now he's purposely making people auto-attack him, which is very... It's annoying, but his old alt didn't have that. <laughs> and, yeah, I understand his old alt did more damage based off of... Uh, uh, based off of how much he was hit, but, you know, at least then he'd be getting chunked, too, because at least got old Galio understood that he was a juggernaut and that like his goal was to just spam abilities from behind and then charge in every now and then this galio is so much different and so much stupid now saying he is the charge in and he will also do the damage from charging in i i do agree uh i do see where like his weaknesses lie such as he does not have an alt 
technically. But that's actually something that I would like to fix. Because his alt needs for an ally to be around for him to alt to them. And it, it's just kind of stupid. But, but yeah, I would not give his W damage reduction. I would only make it a pure taunt. I wouldn't even make it do damage. Um, I would make the range of it increase the longer his W holds in. And maybe at max rank, then it does some damage. But that's it. Just because I don't, like, one, it's just like other times. Or why would you give CC to something that, or why would you give damage reduction to something that's also going to CC a target? That's not just going to CC them, but it's also going to, like, damage them. And, like, the more, the longer you hold it in, the more damage reduction you gain as well, I believe. And it's just kind of stupid to me why this happens. Do we, actually, I don't know about that. Like, the longer you hold it in, the more damage. I'm not 100% sure about that one. But, it, it, it as I said, it, it's just stupid to me. I disagree with the fact that, like, he should be able to taunt people and do damage to them and get uh, damage reduction off of it. If anything, maybe... Not only that, but it also passively. It doesn't even show the passive. This ability passively gives him a magic shield. So, like, what? What? Um, okay, so I would honestly, I'd leave the passive on there because that is what he is meant to do, be, is, like, anti-mages. And I would say for the most part, he honestly is that for a lot of mages can't really deal with him being on top of them. Most mages, in general, are like, if you are on top of me, I'm probably going to die. And because of that, he actually does get in the face of mages really well. And I would leave his W passive on there about giving him the shield. But, as I said, I would just make it a pure taunt that gets bigger the longer you hold it in. And the taunt itself gets longer the hold it into two, because I'm pretty sure that's already the way it works. And it does no damage. Only at max charge does it do damage. And even then, it still won't be anything insane, but you'll, like, you'll actually be able to see it. <laughs> and then, um, whatever the heck it's called, he shouldn't... Um, he will gain, no, as I said, like no damage reduction, and only upon max rank will it do any damage itself. E, Justice Punch. I cannot believe they actually named this Justice Punch. <laughs> um... I like it and I hate it all at the same time. Um, it's very hard to dodge it because, like, the hitbox is his body. And you can't really see... Uh, I guess you can sort of see it when he's dashing right here. But, like, he, he gains his... Like, an entire AoE area of his body. Making it very difficult to dodge this. And upon being hit with it, you will automatically be flung into the air. Now, honestly, the ability itself really isn't all that powerful, it's just the fact that it catches you off guard really quick. Such as, if he is a good Gallo, he'll use his E, then his Q, then his W, or his W, then Q, depending on what your movement speed is, or your mobility is. And by this, I mean, like, during your knock-up with his E, he will then throw down his W. But he could also throw down his Q, and then just tap his W to then uh, taunt you, keeping you in the queue the entire distance. This is why you want to do your Q and then your W, not your W, then your Q, because the taunt will end before your Q finishes, and they could potentially either flash or just dash out of it. Now, if they have normal movement speed, then it wouldn't really matter, because they wouldn't be able to walk out of that in time anyway. Um, and then while this is going on, you'd auto-attack them to proc your passive. And then, as I said, that's kind of the weakness of your kit, is the fact that you don't have an alt to use against them during this time either. Now, I, I think, honestly, it's probably the one ability I wouldn't change at all because, yes, I find the hitbox a little bit annoying. I find the CC a little bit annoying, but the damage itself does is actually very little. The damage Galio mostly does is from his passive and his alt. The W damage, as I said, I didn't even realize because it really isn't all that much. His passive damage is surprisingly a good amount. You don't think it's really going to hurt you that badly, and then you actually do get hit by it, and you like, you see like a tenth of your HP go away, and you're like, ah, that did more damage than I thought it would. And his E does damage, and you can see it, but it's not anything like out of this world. 
it's like, yeah, it, it's pretty tame and okay. So because of that, with the changes as I said to his Q, you know, lowering the damage, lowering the tick time, maybe increasing the AoE, uh, with the W taunting people and that it just being a taunt with some damage if you full charge it, then his E will, like, I think we can keep his E the same, especially after lowering those two other abilities, or at least his W bare minimum. I think the Q could honestly be okay if as long as we keep him bruiser by adjusting his stats. By like because we're lowering his damage reduction, we should just lower his resistances as base they are, and then we have his hero's entrance, his alt. So I'm a bit, bit perplexed by this ability, as you can also see, like the people in the outside circle just kind of get knocked away. And, like, the people towards the middle are the ones that get knocked up. Now, it's not outside middle circle. Like, you know, you see other abilities. It's kind of weird because I've seen people, at, like, not the edge of the circle, but in this middle ground of the circle, still be knocked up. <laughs> I don't know whether it's just the hitbox was messing up or what, but I've seen people that are, like, farther in out of the circle still get knocked up somehow. But I, I, it might have been just more of the hitboxes. The ability itself, I do like. I think it should give damage reduction onto the person that you are jumping to. I think in some cases it's overpowered, such as a vein. I once watched a vein who had like Bork, who had a lot of life steal and a lot of crit. Um, she tower dove. She lost about half her HP, and then Galio altered her. During this time, she gained damage reduction and barely took any damage from the next two tower to shots she took. Then Galio landed, and then he started tanking the tower for her using his damage reduction from his W. And then she just kind of safely sat back and shot the heck out of us. Um, and, and it was just a bit stupid. But I think in general it is an okay ability. I think the damage of it is fine for the most part. I think that the... Uh, the dis the ranges of it are, are just fine. I think I'm okay with the knockup aspect of it. Um, the only thing is, as I said, I would change is I would actually give him an ulti. Such as, I would give it so that he is capable of ulting any ally or himself. But, when he ults himself, he does not gain any damage reduction, and the circle itself will be like half the size of the current circle. He will then pull out his wings, any CC will cancel this, just like his ult is currently. <clears throat> Or not any CC. Any hard CC would cancel this just like his ult is currently. Meaning if he's fighting against like a Rise and he roots him, it will not matter and he'll jump into the air. But if, he, if he's fighting someone like Talia and she knocks him up, it will matter because then his ult will end. But yeah, then he will dash upward into the sky and then he'll immediately punch straight back down. This will do half the damage... That his alt does when from a distance to an ally. It will not give him damage reduction and the circle itself will be smaller. But all our targets hit inside of it will be knocked up. Um, but when he, I also have one changed for when he dashes to an ally. Such as it will give damage reduction. It will knock up the targets in the middle circle. But any target in the outer circle, which we can adjust how big the outer circle is, will not be knocked up or like just knocked over to the side like we saw Draven. They will be slowed, and it will be like a good like 50% slow for like three, two, three seconds. Um, that way they don't have any major form of CC so that they are capable of keep on fighting, but they will still have a hindrance to them. That and the damage will be less in the farther circle. Like, the farther you are from the center of the circle, the less damage it does, kind of like Pantheon Alt. Okay, so we're going to give a quick rundown. I would not change his passive in any way, shape, and form. I would change the damage of his Q, or I would change the ticks. Now, I would actually choose one or the other. I know earlier I was saying both, but the reason I would choose one or the other is because now he has lost some of his tankiness, and because of that, I think he should retain... Some of the amount of damage he does. Um, such as, I think that they should go to the overview, lower the tankiness by one, the crowd control can stay where it is, and increase the damage by one. That way he's more of a bruiser than a tank.
And currently, he's too good at both. He needs to succeed in one more than the other. Um, and because of that, I I would make his W not do percent max damage, percent max HP damage. I'd just make it do a set amount of damage, and then change how like how quickly the ticks work, or maybe because of changing that, we can keep the ticks the exact same, and it can still just proc electrocute real quick that way to keep his damage up. His W will be a pure taunt. The longer you hold it in, the bigger the range is, and um. And if it gets to max rank, which there will be like a little visual and maybe an audio effect showing, it will do a small amount of damage to all people that are taunted as well. Maybe giving, actually maybe the damage can be from him, maybe giving him a small thorn mail passive for a couple of seconds. Um, kind of like Ramus W. Meaning like the people that hit him take a reasonable amount of damage. Nah, I'd rather just actually be damaged from the ability. Then his E, Justice Punch, I would not change in the slightest. It's, um, it doesn't do that much damage. It's not that big of a dash. It's actually very easy to prevent him from escaping when you da like when you walk into his E and he isn't capable of like dodging it or anything. That's something that's pretty good. Um, and then I would, and then his Alt would he'd be able to Alt himself, but it would do half the damage, have half the range. And would ha only be able to knock up, but that's because there really wouldn't be an outer circle. There'd only be an inner circle. And it would not give him any damage reduction. Um, if he dodges to an ally, it would still basically be the same, except for anyone in the outer circle would be slowed instead of knocked back. And that has been Galio's abilities. Then we got his skins, which he doesn't have an insane amount, but he has quite a few. En Enchanted Galio, I was about to say enhanced. Um, I think I honestly I think it's pretty cool. It's basically blue buff Galio, but if blue buff had a, a really cool visual rework, <laughs> um, Hextech Galio I think in itself is pretty okay and pretty cool. Commando Galio I, I like. I think in general just like keeping him super metal and metallic is just very nice. Gatekeeper Galio. Um, I wish it was a little bit different in the form of his wings, but that's about it. Everything else is pretty cool. Debonair, Galio, I, I, I like it, um, but I think it could look a little bit different around the face region. Like, I think his beard's kind of stupid. Um, but besides that, for the rest of his body, he's pretty good. Like, I just, I just think the beard doesn't look good in a metallic form. And Birdio, which is just a, a comedic stupid skin. Which, in general, is is pretty okay and kind of funny, but not anything insane. Um, now, because you're... I, I don't really... Hmm. There, there's a few. There, there are a bare minimum of one skin that I can think for him, such as the high school skins... Or like the school school days or something like that. Let me go to Ari. She has one. Um, here, Academy Ari. See, I can see an Academy Galio, but it wouldn't be the Academy that you're thinking of. It, I, I would. Pro I don't know how they name it though, because they can't name it Academy. They'd have to name it something slightly different. Because what I plan on him being is security for the school. <laughs> um. Oh, what is this in the background? Didn't see this before. Huh. Okay, but I I would have him being security for the school. That way they they just don't get into any trouble, and he's always just like stand behind me, I'll defend you type of thing. Because like these people are academy, so yeah, he he would definitely be like academy security or just security Galio. And then it would show him, like, if, like, the school badge on his police uniform-esque, he, he'd still have... It, it'd basically be, like, Birdio in the sense of where he's just wearing a costume, because, like, this is almost base Galio. Um, it would essentially be, like, Birdio in that state, but really he'd be, like, in a, in a good bulletproof vest, police badge, he'd have, like, the police hat on, and he'd have, like, this, like... The, the school colors on his body and then like the school badge associating him with the academy skins and maybe he would be thrown in the background of the academy skins um 
Besides that, I did think, I don't really know how they do this because he doesn't really resemble a dinosaur. But another one that I was thinking of is the one that Cho'Gath, prehistoric. I guess technically, I, I kind of forgot that Renekton was one and Renekton really doesn't resemble a dinosaur. But like this T-Rex, whatever the heck it's called, uh, uh, basically another T-Rex, pterodactyl. Um, I think that it would be, what the heck? I forgot this skin existed. Damn, that looked cool. Hmm. Huh. Well then. Okay, but, but, prehistoric Cho'Gath, or not Cho'Gath, prehistoric Galio, I would definitely like to see something along those lines, see how cool that would be. I don't really know what color they would make his abilities, but just seeing him, maybe they have like terror, like some weird hybrid with pterodactyl wings. He, his face itself would uh, be like the the horn triceratops type of dinosaur, and then like his body part would just be covered in like scales and little bumps and blades, like these type of little blades. No, no, I just want to see every skin in the game. As a stinking Dark Star skin. This looks too cool. Just dang. Um, oh shoot. I just thought of. As I said. like I got a decent amount. But I wasn't entirely sure about a few. Um, I would have him be another creation. Or like. Uh, where is he? Where is he? There he is. Let's crank. Uh, da, 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 da. Not, not the rogue and all that. I wouldn't have him too far. Where is it? Oh shit, that's right. Blitzcrank doesn't have one. Blitzcrank, that was the skin I wanted to put on Blitzcrank. I guess let's go to the creator then. Uh, Victor. Okay, I think you know where this is going. Yep, creator, Victor with Cho'Gath. Uh, Urgot, Kogma, Velkaz. Um, I want Blitzcrank to have one because, you know, Victor literally created Blitzcrank and all. But, whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah, Skarner. You can see Skarner's little blade back there and part of Skarner right there. Um, but, yeah, I want to see a... Uh, like a, a battle cast Galio potentially just something like Victor he sensed Victor's uh, magical power since Victor is a mage even though a majority of his magic is science and then when he went to stop him he then got attacked by all the other battle casts and he didn't manage to beat them and then Victor experimented on him turning him to another battle cast that's like more metallic based and all of his abilities, which kind of changed more red-colored and red-themed. Um, I, I would definitely like to see maybe, like, speakers on his body or something, kind of resembling how Cho'Gath is for Cho'Gath's roar, but that would be for his W instead. He'd have, like, jets on his back to propel him with forward with his E. He would still have wings, but they would look, like, different. Um, his Q would shoot wings off, or shoot missiles off of his wings, and those would be the two little, like, wind pillars that explode in the middle, and then they'd make, like, a little nuclear spiral cloud where they collide. Oh, um, and that would seem really cool. His passive would basically just be the same thing, but it would look more like an explosion when he punches the ground. And then when he alts, he would turn on the rockets on his back while he's charging. You'd be able to, like, see the smoke um appear near his feet and like push away from him kind of like when an actual rocket launches and then he'd jet into the air and then he'd slam down causing yet again like a nuclear kind of explosion uh that that would be a very very cool skin i all the last bit of that i came up with on the spot the first bit was thought of but not not the last but that was that's cool and and those are skins that i would like to see for Galio, those three. So, yep, 
I think that he, in general, should be less toughness. He's fine with crowd control and fine with his mobility. I think we should keep his damage basically the same, just put another point in here and maybe increase it a little bit. But, yeah, uh, but then make sure that his, like, base armor stats are also lowered because he, he's just... He's too good at too many things. Just he he's there's been so many times when he's been able to one shot people. He's so insanely tanky. It's ridiculous how tanky he is when he also does as much damage as he does. Like they need to fix it because he just does too much damage from being way too tanky. So thank you all very much for watching today's day or today's daily. Oh my god, I keep doing this and I really need to stop. At least I didn't say today's stream. <laughs> thank you very much for watching this A to Z. Uh, if you happen to know any Riot members, please tell them of this rework or changes. I would love for them to potentially either contact me or just be like, huh, that's pretty nice. And decide to just do it or something like that. I would still like the credit, but still... And if you have any feedback whatsoever on Galio or any of the previous champions that have done through the A to Z, please leave it down below. I will read it and get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So thank you all very much for watching. I'm going to have to bid you all adieu. Goodbye.